This video is a walkthrough of how to log satellite contacts using Log4OM. What we're going to start with is the installation of Log4OM. So what you got to do is go to log4om.com slash download, and I'll have all of the links for everything that I talk about in the video description. We'll start by clicking this link down here, the stable release, and it's going to download to your download folder is a zip file. And once that downloads complete, we're going to open it up and uh, run the installer. The download is complete. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up the zip file. There's going to be an executable in it. You can extract that if you want to, or you can run it straight from the zip folder. So we're going to double click on that. And if it asks you whether you want to run it or not, click more info. And do run anyway. Select our language here. Accept the agreement. Pick the folder you want to install this to. Defaults are fine for me. Uh, here, if you want to install OmniRig, I'm not attaching this to a radio, so I'm not going to install OmniRig. I'm not quite sure what you would need that for, but again, in this case, we're not going to need it because we're just logging satellite contacts and not attached to the radio. Click next. Click next again, and we'll create a desktop shortcut. Click next and install. Click next to finish, and we can select launch uh, log for OM, but I'm going to uncheck that just so I can click finish here and show you it on the desktop. So close out of our downloads folder. And we double click on this file here, it's gonna open up log for om So the first time you log into log for om you need to put in specific information for the station, uh, which would be under user configuration, station information. You're gonna to have to put in a call sign. Here, for example, I've put in a local club call sign with the correct IARU region, the country, the ITU zone and CQ zones, as well as the station grid square. I put in six characters here and we're good to go. That's what you need for the initial station settings. After we've put in all the station information, we're gonna to go to the user configuration main section here and type in a description of what we're gonna call this configuration. So I'm gonna call this one W1EDH to match the call sign and make the configuration active. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is set up a database. So we go to database and click new for new database. And I'm going to save this one in my documents folder. You can save it anywhere you want here just to make it easy. We're going to call it W1EDH and click save. You can keep the database as SQLite. That's fine. Click OK. Next up, you're going to go to information providers. And what I use is QRZ and type in your username and password here. Uh, primary source also is QRZ. So you'll type in your username for QRZ and your password for QRZ, and that'll be able to pull from QRZ to get contact information from folks that you are making contact with. Another thing to note, if you want to automatically upload your QSOs to Logbook of the World or any of these websites, you can do that in external services under user configuration. And that's all you need to do to configure log for OM uh, initially. And that's all you need to do to configure log for OM initially. We're going to click save and apply. And if Windows Defender comes up, we're going to allow access for log for OM. And here we are in the log for OM interface. If you want to make another profile, for instance, here I did the club call and I want to save another log for something else. What I can do here is go to settings, program configuration. And in this case, we're going to click add new configuration. I'm going to call this K2D because I'm going to be doing 13 colonies. And if we click this save configuration or make configuration active button, it's going to say that you can't make this active because you haven't configured anything. So we'll go down to station information. I'm going to call this 
K to D. We're going to be in region two. And then the country, same deal. We're going to do United States. Eight, five, and we'll do FM 30, FN 31. All right. And then we need to do the same thing, create database, new database. We're going to call this one K2D. Save. Test it like we did before. We're going to set up the info providers again. Once all of that is configured, you just click this make configuration active. And now you have a new profile. Click save and apply. Now that we've got everything configured, how do we log satellite contacts? Well, you'd click my F4 as well as recent QSOs in order to see the log file coming in as you're logging contacts. You click satellite mode here. Now what it's going to do is enable satellite mode. Uh, so on this side, you see that it's in sat mode and up here said satellite mode enabled. This drop down is going to have a list of predefined satellites that come with log for OM. What we're going to do is we're going to replace that file with a different file. It's in the video description and it's current as of June 2022 for the satellites that are active. And in order to get those, what you do is follow the link and click this down arrow. And it'll download satellites.csv. In order to replace that satellites file, you go up to help, open config folder. This folder is going to have a satellites CSV. What you'll do is you'll copy the file from your downloads folder into this folder overwriting the satellite CSV. So I'm going to go to my downloads folder. and copy, control C, or you can right click and do copy. Then go into your log for OM2 config folder and do paste. It's gonna ask you if you wanna replace the satellite CSV file and we're going to replace it. Let's take a peek at the satellite CSV file. It shows current satellites that are active uh, and their names that you can put into the program for description. Uh, Lilacsat2 is the only one that I have spelled out because that's the common name. All the rest of them I know by their uh, AMSAT names, Logbook of the World names. In order to make that file active, we need to close out of Log4OM. So you can see now that nothing's updated. If I close out and I reopen log for om we're going to go back where we were, click my F4, recent QSOs, and enable satellite mode. The satellites have now been updated. We'll select one of the satellites in order to log a uh, pass, fake pass, with a contact. So we'll do RS44. That's my favorite. Uh, satellite mode doesn't need to be selected. You won't need that in order to upload a log to Logbook of the World or uh, log it in to, to confirm a contact. What we're gonna do next here is do band. So select the band for RS-44 and that's gonna be two meters. If you want, you can also do the receive band, receive band 70 centimeters. And then you need to select the mode. So we're gonna do single sideband. And that's the information that you need in order to log a contact with the satellite program. So we're gonna put in a test call sign. We'll say, uh, let's do W1AW. And if you entered in that information for QRZ, you're going to have uh, information pulled about the station straight from QRZ. 
to log it, you hit enter or you hit this plus icon over here. And now the information is stored right here. Now this information is pretty much set for HF contacts. What we want to do, if you want to see what satellite you caught someone on, is right click and do edit table layout and select the information that you would like to see here. So what I have selected here is band, band RX, call sign, comment, frequency, frequency received, grid square, mode, name, prop mode, QSO date, uh, RST sent, RST received, even though those aren't very important, satellite QSO and sat name. And if you click X here, you can then move these around if you want to, to put them in the correct order. Uh, so what we have here is the uh, QSO date, call sign, sat name, mode, band, band received, name, etc. cetera. Uh, and so when we type in a new contact, what we can do, let's say we're gonna work the ISS and we're gonna work one of the astronauts on the International Space Station and A1SS. We do need to change the mode. The mode's gonna be FM, as well as make sure that we have the correct band that we're transmitting on and receive band. Uh, so those are correct. And then we go ahead and hit enter. And there's our next contact. Now, if you're doing logging on paper and then you want to transcribe it here at a later date, what you do is hit these lock icons. It's going to stop the timer and you can set the date and time manually. Again, what we need to do here to make a satellite contact and log it on log for OM is go to Maya 4 satellite mode, select the satellite. Click recent QSO so you can see your QSO list, and that's going to have everything you need in order to log satellite contacts. To export logs for upload to Logbook of the World, if you want to do it manually via TQSL or you want to send your logs to someone, what you do is go up to File, Export ADIF, and we're going to select Fields. The fields that are important to a Logbook of the World confirmation when it comes to satellites is band call, mode, propagation mode, QSO date, sat name, sub mode, and time on. I'm gonna list those all in the video description. So we have band call. We got mode. Propagation mode. QSO date. We also need the sat mode or i'm sorry we don't need the sat mode we need the sat name sub mode time on so we should see eight selected items and we'll go back through this again band call mode propagation mode qso date sat name sub mode time on and then you click this ADIF file here and put it in the place that you want to save it. So we're going to call this K2D 2022 Click Save. And now if I go into my documents, there's the ADI file. And this is good for uploading to Logbook of the World has all the contact information here. If you want to switch between different profiles, so right now I'm on K2D, I go up to settings, program configuration, user configuration, right now it's K2D. Let's do W1EDH, make the configuration active, save and apply. And you can see the contacts that I made on K2D aren't showing up in W1EDH. This is a good way to keep logs separated if you're doing different events or working different calls. So go back up to settings to go back to K2D and then select the dropdown, K2D, 
make configuration active, save and apply. And you can see that our contacts came back. This next section is about support moving forward when you're logging and adding satellites to your satellites CSV file. So where I came up with the satellite CSV file that looks like this is straight from logbook of the world's naming convention when it comes to logging satellites. The format that log for om uses is satellite name that you're going to see in the program itself and then the actual satellite name as it comes to logbook of the world's logging so for instance here i've got all of the satellites listed with their logbook of the world name uh, except for lilac sat 2 uh, because cas 3h doesn't have meaning to me so inside of log for om you'll see this versus this but when it exports the ADIF file, uh, it will show up as satellite name CAS3H. I pulled that from the Logbook of the World site that shows the satellites that are supported by Logbook of the World and what their names are. So if a new satellite comes out that you want to log, you have to copy the name of the satellite and put it into the satellite's CSV file that Log4OM uses. The way that I was able to figure out which satellites I should leave in here is going to the AMSAT Live Oscar Satellite status page. And I basically pulled from what's here plus these XW sats sometimes come and go. So I left all of them in there. Uh, but all the ones that are showing repeater transponder active, I also have listed in the satellite's CSV file. Now, when you're logging for log for om you need to know what band the satellite is and what the receive band is. You don't have to put the receive band, but I always do anyway. Uh, to find that out, if you don't have it memorized or you're not looking at your radio at the time, is going into either the FM satellite frequency summary page, which shows the uplink and the downlink, and the uplink is always going to be your band, and then the downlink is going to be your receive band. So uplink is this one, and downlink is the RX band. Linear satellites have the same list, so you can see uplink and downlink as well, and that is what you would put into log for om Earlier in the video, I had mentioned eight different things that needed to be exported in your ADIF file in order to upload it to Logbook of the World and confirm contacts. Where I got that from is this website, Logbook of the World is for Satellite Operators 2. And what it shows as you read down through it is that there's only five lines that are really needed from any logging software in order for Logbook of the World to be happy with that contact. As far as satellites go, you really only need to add two more lines of information. Down here, propagation mode and satellite name. Those are the two things that you need to add in order to upload to Log with the World. So your logging software will add a whole bunch of information, but these are the key pieces that need to be uploaded. I listed eight. The reason why I listed eight is because FT4 is actually a sub mode. So if you are going to be working FT4 on satellites, you do need to also export the sub mode. And if you follow all of those steps, you'll be using log for om to log satellite contacts. 73.